Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our uh, 60 minute webinar with myself and Anna. And we're looking forward to having a bit of fun, aren't we? Absolutely. Always fun and entertainment and education, inspiration as well. Yeah, so we absolutely. So, on this, on this rather cool morning here in the UK, so it's about beautiful minus though. three. Really you know. frosty and beautiful. I yes. love this weather. I Just know lots of tea. Can. <laughs> yeah, I see. Because Anna's from Ukraine, she she thinks this is warm. I mean, but to me, I mean, this is just freezing. On the other hand, my son right now is in America, and it's minus twenty seven over there at the minute, so he's welcome to it as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, moving on. So um, we want to talk to you about speaking. We want to talk to you about. That funny thing called standing up and and, and presenting business, uh, in, in, you know, in a, a way that you're comfortable with. Frankly, I think that's that's part of the thing, uh, of being comfortable in your skin to be able to speak and present, and to do that, um, we believe there's a number of things you can do. So what we're going to do is share with you just some thoughts and some ideas. Uh, I'm going to put a slideshow up in a second uh, and I'm going to go first and then Anna's going to share some ideas with you and at the end we're going to let you know some things that we're doing and uh, hopefully that'll be useful for you. So if I get straight on and add this on now. Well, um, actually, Peter, do you mind if I say some uh, nice words about you? Because um, I guess you can. <laughs> I'm just eager. I'm keen to speak. Like, give me the mic. I've got my yeah. mic here. <laughs> Well, anyways, uh, it's it's an absolute pleasure for me to introduce Peter as my co-host and um, my uh, partner in in business and in crime. But let let's not go down there. So, anyways, Peter Roper does not need uh, really an introduction to those who know him. But if you don't know him and you're watching this live recording, uh, he has been in business for forty years, really. And he's absolutely passionate about building his own businesses and helping other people grow their businesses. Now, you might be thinking, oh, 40 years, that's a long time. But uh, he started when he was 10. So don't really worry about his age. <laughs> Uh, over that time, he has had uh, six businesses, uh, three of which were really, really successful, and uh, the other three, not so much. But guess which ones presented the most valuable lessons? Now, he has worked uh, with thousands of family business owners across the UK, helping them grow and develop. Now, Peter is not only passionate about entrepreneurship, but he also knows uh, from experience what creates success. And he helps others achieve that success as well. Peter Roper also knows a, a thing or two about speaking. Having shared his keynotes and presentations in front of 750,000 delegates worldwide, uh, he has learned um, how to speak in front of an audience. And he also served as the national president uh, of the Professional Speaking Association in the UK in 2009. He also was a board member for a number of years in the PSA, and he's a fellow speaker. Peter has earned the reputation of being a natural presenter. Why? Because you get the same Mr. Roper on stage and off stage. And um, Mr. Roper also is the author of six books, one of which is New York Times bestseller called And Death Came Third. An interesting thing about that book, it became the bestseller in the first 12 hours of its release. Imagine that. Now, Peter will tell you more about it when he's sharing his, uh, his part of the presentation. The man will inspire you. He will educate you. He will entertain and equip you with practical tools and uh, steps to elevate your results. Now, the most important thing is that this person really cares. Peter is a man of integrity. And, and that's why there is such a huge um, and uh, really a great connection and values match between who I am and between who Peter is. So please help me welcome to the virtual stage, the one and only Peter Roper. 
Oh, thank you, Anna. That's very <laughs> kind of you. Um, and I can see in our studio, by the way, that I have three lovely ladies also listening to us right now, in Claire and Susan and my co-author, Leslie, as well. So uh, wave to me if you can actually hear us at the minute. I thought that's good. If we get time at the end, we'll have a chat afterwards, but feel free to carry on listening. Is that all right with you? That's great. And at the same time, I'll keep my eyes open on comments. If you want to make any comments, we're live on Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube as we speak. So let's uh, let's just go with uh, this um, slideshow now, and we'll see how it goes. So thanks for that. And let me ask you a quick question. <clears throat> Claire and Susan and Leslie know this question backwards from me, but even so, it remains to be said the same thing. Why have you come on this 60 Minutes? What's made you do it? What's made you say, do you know what, I want to check out about speaking? Uh, for most people, there are a number of reasons that they would come on a webinar like this. Uh, undoubtedly, it's unique. <clears throat> the fact that Anna and I are doing it makes it unique. It's, you know, it, it, it's different to anything else. But uh, what we are about isn't important. What is important is you. Why are you here? That's the question. Now, for many people, it could be to improve your career. If you're, you know, if you're employed, it could be that you want to move on up the, you know, the the, uh, the ladder, and speaking, presenting, whatever you want to call it, talking in front of people. Perhaps you're a new manager, and now you have to talk in front of a team. Perhaps you're a director, and you've got a group of people. Or do you know what? You just want to have your voice heard when you get the opportunity inside an office, in some form or another. So maybe it's that to improve your career, or it could be because you run your own business. And certainly I know Claire, Susan and Leslie all run their own business, as Anna and I do. And there's no doubt there are a number of surveys across the world that all say that if you stand up and speak, you've got a chance of people hearing you in a way that you can promote your business. So getting more business, getting on the bottom line, making some more money, or as, as, as I'm well known for saying, filling the fridge, Standing up and speaking helps you do that. There is no question of that. Maybe it's, you want to be recognized as the, the authority in your field. So that's a gratuitous picture of a field with a bit of sunshine and a summer type picture, mainly because it's so flipping cold here at the minute. But the fact is, you may want to be recognized as the authority. You may already be the authority in your chosen field, your chosen career, but perhaps you want to make it blatantly obvious in these days now and record this in 2024 more and more people are recognized through lots of different mediums of being an authority and there, again there's no doubt being an authority whether you're employed or whether you're running your own business <clears throat> or part of a larger organization recognized as the authority in your field carries weight and for whatever that might mean for you Perhaps it's just purely and simply for recognition. And there is nothing wrong with that at all. Being, uh, being recognized for your achievements, being recognized for the person that you are, recognized for your abilities, whatever it might be. All of us at some point in our lives, even of those of us that may be the most quiet in the in day-to-day -day world, appreciate recognition. So perhaps by standing up and speaking, being recognized is something that, that is important to you. But for me, and, I, and Anna's very kindly said some of the things I've been involved in over the years, and it is my history at the end of the day. Um, uh, you know, at my age of 67 now, it, it is what it is. But what I've recognized over and over again over the last 26, 27 years of running our own businesses is that most people are held back when it comes to speaking and presenting. Mm -hmm. Some things hold you back. Or you get to the position where you do stand up and speak, but you want to get to the next stage and that's holding you back. Or maybe you are now speaking really confident and really well, but actually you want to become really, really good. And if that's the case, maybe there's still something holding you back. There's a little voice somewhere, you know, that's in the back of your head. And it's probably saying things like, well, I don't know. I don't know if I've got the knowledge. I don't know if I've got the experience. You know, is, is that what everybody thinks? You know, and my experience most times is that most people actually have got the knowledge and they have got the experience. So that's not really perhaps what holds them back. Or their belief structure. The belief structure says, oh, I don't know. I don't think I can do it, you know. Um, 
and we all know that you know by doing something you know it's all about taking a step and taking another step and another step or having somebody to ha hold your hand as you take steps to get to where you can be more comfortable most people however are held back by one thing one key thing and again claire susan leslie you know this story backwards leslie particularly you know this story backwards fear there you are there's the gratuitous picture of what is a large cat so anybody that knows anna will know she's bonkers about cut cats and kittens um and that thing definitely scares me right now that thing scares me uh and uh, you know uh, we're all scared of something fear holds most people back and you know uh, my co-author andy lapata and i and leslie morrissey had a big hand in this book many many years ago and death came third and uh talked about fears and well, what is fear? What is it about it? Why did we call the book and death came third? Well, here is the story that you've probably heard more than once, uh, which is um, in a 1984 New York Times survey of our top 10 fears, snakes came seventh, spiders came sixth, and death came third. Can you believe death came third? And number one and number two, and in subsequent years have always been, and they vied for which one was one and which was two, speaking in public and walking into a room full of strangers. So we would rather walk into a room full of strangers uh, uh, and speak, or rather not. We would rather leap into a pit of snakes and spiders and die than actually speaking in public. It's unbelievable, isn't it? It's, it's absolutely unbelievable. And yet, I understand this totally. It's not me. It's a picture of the closest I could find. Uh, that probably look like me at that age, all right? So uh, this is me potentially going back to when I was 11 and 12 years old. So that's 50 plus years ago that I was in front of a dais like that, except there wasn't a microphone in front of me. And uh, the sort of brown wood effect, which is why I took this picture on, and the fact that my I definitely had hair in those days and it was cut like that, was that was potentially me in front of a school. And the story goes very simply this, that at, at the age of 11 uh, or so, I went into school and the one thing I could do at school is be the kid that would read out of a book. I wasn't very good at anything else, but I could read out of a book. And it was quickly obvious that I was the only one that would read out of a book. So I did. And I used to do that quite regularly. Everything else was pretty much poor, but that was the one thing I could do. And one day my English teacher uh, uh, asked me to stand up and speak and read a poem out. And he said, Roper, read this, read this uh, poem out. It's called Tiger, Tiger. It's a very famous poem by William Blake. And I started it with my best Brummy accent. And I started reading Tiger, Tiger, burning bright in the forest of the night. And he looked at me and the English teacher really didn't like me. And I have to say, I didn't really like him either. And he said, what is the poem about? And I said, it's about a tiger, sir. And he said, you are a cretin with a Birmingham accent. Sit down and never speak in this school again. Now, some of you I know are smiling and find it funny, and I get why you find it funny. And there are others that are saying, oh, that's a terrible thing to do. And I have to tell you, I never did stand up and speak in front of the school again. So the one thing I could do at school he took it away from me. And so by the time I grew into uh, getting a job, which is what I did, I got a job uh, because my dad said, go out and find a job. And I went out and found a job. And he said, right, you can come back home there. So I got a job. And at 18, uh, uh, there's a long story I won't bore you with, but I was on a, a, a training program. And they asked me if I would like to get more involved in the training program. I did. And I didn't know, but I was stitched up to stand in front of an audience very much like this. Now, again, I've deliberately picked this picture because I can't find pictures of the past like this. But broadly, I was working for a motor manufacturer and I had to stand in front of a thousand people. And it looked just like that because it was in the early 70s where everything was black and white. It took me another two years before I could get a color television. All right. So everything was black and white. And that's the reason why I picked it, because the auditorium there very similar to the one I had to actually stand up and speak in front of. And I was stitched up and I was terrified. And Death Came Third didn't come close for me. 
I was so scared. And there was a dais there, you know, a lectern, whatever you want to call it. You didn't have slides in those days. You didn't even have a slideshow. I had to read out what it is uh, that, that we've done through this program. And I've been stitched up to read out something which was going to be very contentious. And I thought of all sorts of ways of getting out of it. You know, I was going to feign illness, that I was going to trip over, uh, you know, I suddenly couldn't walk. But in the end, I did it. I stood up and started reading out this stuff. And there were a lot of unhappy people with the stuff I was reading because I was the messenger who was being shot at, basically. And I had been totally stitched up without realizing it because I was young. Uh, and, and um, uh, you know, I didn't have the experience to know what was happening at all. And I could see in the audience my boss, my boss's boss, and my boss's boss's boss. And they all were looking at me, daggers mumbling under their, their mouths. And I could see I was in big trouble. And I carried on reading it out. But something happened during that presentation that stuck with me. It was a small thing. It was the germ of an idea. But it was powerful. And that was that every time I looked up from reading the notes, and by the way, it was a good job there was a lectern because I was literally holding it on with white knuckles and my legs had gone. Literally, my legs were like rubber. I would have fallen on the floor if I couldn't have held on to that lectern. Every time I looked at those the people there and I looked to some pals in the audience for encouragement, they immediately ducked their eyes down and wouldn't look at me. And yet when I looked at the direct, uh, the my boss, my boss's boss, and my boss's boss's boss, who was a director of the company, every time I looked at them, they looked down as well. And in that just that short thing, I realized that many people actually had got the same fear of standing up and speaking and presenting. And I got through it uh, and it was interesting afterwards. I think that interesting is a code word. However, it started me off on a long, long journey of getting more involved in speaking. And eventually I went into sales because uh, that, they gave away a free car and we had young children and I needed a car. Uh, and I was the world's worst salesperson, but I had somebody take me under their uh, wing and there are lots of stories there. Uh, but eventually I became good at it and I became good at standing up and spe speaking and presenting. And I found that if I was the one that stood up and presented, it made me stand out. So again, if you are an employee, it makes you more noticeable. Obviously, you need to do a good job when you do it. However, it made you more noticeable. And of course, when I started my own business back in 96, um, I got more involved with things uh, and I spoke more often. And eventually I got involved with the Professional Speaking Association by, by pure fluke. And it was a fluke. And uh, I got involved. And over those 20 odd years, 24 years now in the PSA, I made a lot of speaking pals and I've learned a lot. I went to school. I went back to school, in fact, and I learned from people who I saw on stage. And I went, I, you know, I literally started asking them questions. I became a real pest, asking lots of questions. I went on lots of programs uh, and development programs to develop me to become better at what I, I did. I fell into professional speaking in 1999. I uh, literally had 90 seconds notice to speak in front of 750 people in, a, in an audience in, in America. And that's how I started my speaking career. But actually, it was the PSA that helped me enormously. And learning, working with coaches, working with people in the whole field of standing up and speaking and presenting made a huge difference for me. Uh, and those people today, and some of them I call, you know, strong, close friends who I can pick up a phone, do a Zoom call with and say, I've got this idea about for speaking, presenting, and they'll bounce ideas to me, which is a fabulous thing. The key for me is that I, I went to school on standing up and speaking and presenting, becoming confident at speaking, being, being able to be myself. Anna was kind enough to say that I'm known as not just the family businessman, but as the natural presenter. In other words, you, what you see is what you get. You know, I, you know, I'm comfortable in my skin that I'm exactly the same if I'm speaking with one person as I am with a few thousand. I will speak. The, the techniques might be different, but I, I am what I am. And it took time to do that. In one year alone, in 2003, I spoke in front of 170-something. Uh, I think there was 173 audiences in uh 2003 which is bonkers 
but I learned to how to be comfortable inside myself. And what we're sharing with you today is, is, is really a couple of things. Anna will share some stuff with you shortly about a specific area. Um, as far as business is concerned, I believe business is all about a story. I have a new website coming out very shortly, which talks all about the story of business and all the different areas of business because it's a story. Uh, and Anna and I are joined certainly in one respect, which is we both believe that stories make the world go around. And certainly when it comes to speaking, stories absolutely make the world go around. So for me, it's really important. It's really important in just the same way as, as I did, that you look to a proven platform with people that are trusted, that you know know what they're doing, that they're good at what they do. And perhaps the program that uh, we're going to provide uh, in a few weeks' time might just be for you. And what I would say is that uh, Anna and I are both very adverse to what we would call unethical selling and poor trust. In other words, we're not saying in this program, and Anna's going to talk about it more in a minute, um, we're not into saying do this program for three minutes and you'll 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 be on a, a you know um, a ten thousand a, a minute salary or whatever. Um, we are inundated with people telling you that uh, all you have to do is do somebody's program and all of a sudden the world changes. Well, no, it won't. But you will be better. You will be better if you come on the program. So what we have is honest. It's genuine. We're very much values driven. And that's one of the things that joins Anna and myself. And um, the program we're talking about is unlocking your potential and speaking with impact. Because for us, it's speaking about impact that's the big deal. That's the difference between standing up and presenting something and standing up and speaking and having impact. Again, I'll go back to it. Do you want impact? for you if you're employed? Do you want impact if you're running your own business? Do you want to have an impactful presentation or speech that enables people to come to you and talk to you about whatever it is you want them to talk to you about? That's what this program is really about. So I'm going to put you on to Anna now in a second, but I just want to tell you a little bit about Anna first. I'll let her tell you some of her, her story as she goes along as well. But Anna is from Ukraine, as if you haven't already guessed, all right? And uh, Anna had a dream as a little girl uh, to go to America. And she was born in poverty. And uh, uh, she had a dream that everybody else locally to her thought was mad. Uh, and uh, she was laughed at because of it. But slowly but surely, she has a very strong will. And eventually, she found a way to get to America and to go to the American dream. And she found out that the American dream isn't quite what everybody thinks the American dream is. Um, and she had to work three jobs and she was working away like crazy and thinking this isn't actually what I thought it was going to be. And she fell in love with public speaking and became very, very good at it. She has shared stages with some of the biggest speakers on a worldwide basis. And she has a passion for helping people to stand up and speak and present. And that's where the two of us join forces, if you like. Now, I don't know if it's fortunate or not for Anna, but she fell in love with a guy from England. All right? <laughs> and that meant she came to England, which is why literally Anna and Christian live a few miles away from me here. Uh, and... Um, yeah, she's gotten used to the, the, the English approach. She's gotten used to the British approach. Uh, and uh, has applied herself diligently to helping people to stand up and speak and present. So I'm going to get rid of this presentation now and bring you back to Anna. And Anna, it's over to you if you'd like to share the screen, and I'll put you on to full screen. Thank you, Peter. Thank you for your kind words. And uh, every time you speak, like I, I meant when I said that every time Peter speaks, uh, you have to shut up and listen and take notes. So I took some notes um, as well, because it's it's really powerful stuff. And thank you for introducing me. Thank you for saying those nice words. Um, yes, I did move to, to the UK after becoming an American citizen, like achieving my big uh, lifelong dream, because I fell in love with, uh, with an English guy. And uh, we uh, we have an interesting, I mean, we love each other, but every time I say something silly because of my Ukrainian accent or making some mistake, my husband goes, this is why we voted out of European Union. 
because of you Ukrainians. And I go, honey, Ukraine has never been part of European Union. And he goes, that's irrelevant. You were close enough. Anyways, I've learned, I've learned living with my husband for the past uh, seven years, what an English banter is. So anyways, um, what I want to talk to you about is how speaking can absolutely change your life and your business because it has changed mine. And my story isn't just about, as Peter kindly mentioned, uh, overcoming difficulties of poverty in Ukraine and building life on my own in America, uh, overcoming lots of obstacles, you know, very little English speaking skills and being on my own, but also uh, discovering my identity, finding clarity and confidence in my own voice. Uh, and figuring out where I belong and what I could do with my life. Because, yes, there was a time when I had to work three jobs to, to provide for myself. I mean, America is the land of opportunities, but none of those opportunities were handed to me. I had to work really hard. And I was constantly searching for my place under the sun, if you will. I was sick and tired of doing the manual jobs. I didn't have professional qualifications to begin with. I couldn't speak English properly. <laughs> so I had to work really hard with my hands. I was doing a waitressing job uh, most of the time. But during that time, I realized in my soul searching, my passion for speaking. At first, I was absolutely petrified of that. But that provided the platform for me First of all, to learn English, to learn how to communicate, to learn how to make sure people understand me. And then the next level was how to connect with people and inspire them. Because I had a story coming from poverty to opportunities and building life from scratch. And I wanted to inspire other people with my message. And then eventually it, it grew and evolved and there were some frustrations and challenges along the way because it's life. But I, that journey was absolutely fascinating. Uh, I, I did share the stages with some prominent speakers like Les Brown, John Maxwell, uh, Nick Vujicic, and uh, Seth Godin in, in America. I uh, also spoke uh, internationally. I spoke in Costa Rica on the transformational um, project that we did with the John Maxwell team. I spoke in Canada, Europe, Ukraine. And I've been really blessed and privileged to, uh, to be able to share my message. Um, but the biggest reward to me has always been like hearing people say you've inspired me with your, with your story to pursue my own life of greatness. Now, if a simple girl like me, who was born in poverty, who was mocked and humiliated for her poverty, I know there are different levels to poverty, but they're all devastating, really. And if someone like me could find that clarity and certainty and confidence in her voice, in her message, you can as well. And if you do, it will absolutely change your life. Why speaking? Well, as um, as far as I understand, we have some ladies in the room who are um, who are business owners. So I'm gonna set this example in the business um, context. So most people, most business owners really want more business. Um, and like it translates into more clients and more money because that's how you measure uh, success traditionally. And it's a fair aspiration to get more clients and to be able to generate more profit because it gives oxygen to your business and it gives you freedom and opportunities and growth. But that's not where the journey begins. Like you don't start this journey like, okay, how do I get more clients? You have to go a little bit deeper. And what do I mean by that? I I'm going to share with you my iPad and I'm going to do some drawing. So hopefully you're okay with that. So if you imagine an analogy of an iceberg, everything above the water level is shallow. And everything below the water level is deep and it gets deeper the further down you go. And you can't be shallow and deep at the same time. 
Now, a shallow approach to either building or growing a business elicits shallow thinking. And the greatest form of shallow thinking is asking a question, how do I get more clients and make more money? Now, a deep approach to building or growing a business elicits deep thinking. And the greatest form of deep thinking is asking a question, how do I connect with my audience in a more deeper, in a deeper and more profound way? What is um, with authentic with authenticity? I need to spell right. So if I make a mistake, <laughs> don't don't mind me. What is the true meaning of the impact I want to do? Peter was sharing. Uh, was talking about the true impact that you uh, will help you increase your income, and I believe that every business is the is the force for good. And even if you sell some commoditized products, you are still aiming to make a difference. The impact. What is that impact you are trying to deliver? So, and, and it's not just like understanding the like what, what's the meaning of the value I provide, but also being able to articulate it. And that's where speaking comes into play. So uh most people operate at this level, like they want they want more clients and more more money, which is a fair aspiration, but it's a shallow conversation. It's like looking at an iceberg that perks up right above the water level, and it's only ten percent of what's happening with the entire structure of what's actually going on. The ninety percent of an iceberg is below the water level is the stuff that you can't see. And that's where the real majesty is. The truth of the matter is that no matter how much wind and storm you blow at the tip of the iceberg, it will always move in the direction of the base because there is so much more power. More leads, more clients, more money is a fair question, but it isn't the right question. What I would like uh, for us to focus on is how to make the base the powerhouse because icebergs are always moving in the direction of the base. I would like you to imagine what your business and your life would look like if you had the clarity on how to express the value of what you do with authenticity and persuasion. So it connects and it persuades your audience in a natural and authentic, ethical way. Peter made this point earlier that we are people who will not uh, resort to, um, you know, the sleazy sales pushy techniques. We want to make a difference. We are here to bring an impact. And we want to show you that it's possible for you to do the same. You can connect and persuade people in an authentic and ethical way. What would that mean to you? Please share with us if if, uh, uh, if that would make a difference, to have clarity on how to express the value of what you do with uh, authenticity and persuasion. Now, I believe that it goes even deeper than that. I believe that you deserve to become an authentic impact maker. Because yet again, a business is a force for good. It's not just transactional um, relationship that business owners create. It's making an impact. It contributes to other people's lives. Are you able to express it with clarity and, and persuasion in your, in your messaging? Once you become that authentic impact maker, I don't know why I keep doing this, um, your, your whole business will grow exponentially. More clients and more money will become a natural consequence. Now, what happens there at, when you become the authentic impact maker? Well, 
This is where the power of storytelling comes into play. Your story is your power. I have written two books, and one of them is called Your Story is Your Power. And I truly and passionately believe, like in my own life experience and in uh, the my clients' um, experience and practice, that your story is what differentiates you. That's what makes you stand out, and that's what positions your uniqueness. Now, this is like when you really own that transformational presence about you, clarity, confidence, and ability to express yourself powerfully. And, you know, people want to be in your presence. They want to learn from you. They want to buy from you. They want to be impacted by you. I want to share with you a, um, a story of one of my clients. There she is, Michelle, Michelle De Stefano. She is from Texas. And she came to me because she wanted to launch her coaching business. Uh, her career as a nurse leader for uh, 30 years abruptly ended. Uh, she was just let go, uh, like uh, out of the blue. Now, after a short time of a pity party, she uh, got a grip and she decided to jump into the scary world of entrepreneurship. And very quickly, she discovered that she couldn't really communicate the value she could bring to her clients. She didn't know how to leverage her extensive expertise and experience and how to articulate it in a powerful message to get business. So we got to work together and it was fascinating to, to work with that lady. She's an action taker. Uh, so she leveraging her, her story, we created what well, she created. I was just there to support her. Um, her program, the signature program, which is called the SOAR methodology that she takes her clients on. And she created some phenomenal impact with that. She was getting one-to-one -one clients. Now, after at first, it was nice because she broke through uh, in, in her business. But then she reached that ceiling, that threshold. She, she was getting tired of just trading time for money. So she came up with an idea to create a membership subscription for, um, you know, and to get some clients. Her goal was to get 10 people. And she was working hard, again, leveraging her story and her voice. And she kept sending me these updates like via email. I signed up two and signed up three. And the latest email she sends me is, is this one. I just sold number nine. And she was so excited. She actually sold 10 people who committed to a 12-month uh, subscription membership. And she's having uh, some phenomenal you know, calls and an impact with, the, with those people. Now, it all uh, began with really leveraging her story and finding clarity and ability to express the value that she could provide for her clients. And she managed with that, she also managed to land some speaking engagements. She's, she's leveraging her network. She was, she's been to Vegas uh, and she, she's just making it happen. Now, I wanted to share this story with you to inspire you of what's possible because there is no reason why Michelle's story can't be your story. But you need to really use your voice for that. It all comes down to that. So let's talk a little bit about what, what needs to happen in order for you to show powerfully and to position, to show uh, powerfully and position your value. How do you need to show up and position your value to grow your business, to grow your results? Okay, so here is, um, here is what I have discovered. Now, when it comes to uh, speaking and leveraging your voice in terms of business growth, there are a few things that we need to consider. So first, we need to look at how you show up. And a lot of people show up to uh, impress. And when you show up to impress uh, while speaking, it's all about you. But when you show up to inspire, it's no longer about you. It's about your audience and the impact you provide on them. On the other side, we need to consider um, how you position your value. And for a lot of people, especially who are just starting their speaking and you know sharing their message, it's a little bit shallow and confusing. It's not clear. 
But if you go through that process of growth, which we will talk about a little bit later, and you figure out how to position your profound value in a simple and easy to understand way, everything changes for you. So depending on how you show up and how you position your value, what do those quadrants look like? Well, when your message is confusing and you don't really know how to clearly express the value of what you do and you're there to impress people, you occupy the space of what I call being the copycat. That's not you, by the way, but people out there. <laughs> and they know no different. You know, they are just trying to uh, regurgitate someone else's ideas, concepts and phrases, some quotes. And they are there just to demonstrate how much they know. They are trying to impress the audience. Now, it doesn't mean that they are bad people. It's just they, you know, they are not really connecting with their audience. It's a red zone. Now, on the other side, you might have figured out how to position your value in a, your profound value in a powerful and simple way that anyone can understand. And you probably have had some success with that. But if you show up from the place of trying to impress people, you occupy the space of what I call being the ego person. Hey, look at me. I am a big shot. I know what I'm talking about. I have this magic secret key to success. And if you pay me money, I will, I will give you all my tools that will be just like a magic bullet. We all have come across those people who can sell their own um, grandmother's teeth. They are very good at manipulating and marketing and they perceive it as a game. They love the, the, the thrill and the excitement and they're there just to impress people. And that's not an authentic impact maker way. We, you know, it's, it's not really about you. It's about the difference you're going to make in other people's lives. So those people usually in this space, like ego people, they don't really care about their audience, where they're at, or about helping them increase their results. It's all about them and being in the spotlight. So the first shift occurs is on emotional scale. When you shift your focus from yourself from you to your audience, from trying to impress them to inspiring them. And you get, when you do that, like the energy shifts, you begin to connect with people more. But what happens if you haven't really figured out how to position your value in a clear, persuasive, and compelling way? It's still a little bit shallow and still a little bit confusing. It's not that, you know, it's not that powerful. Well, you occupy the space of what I call being an amateur. This is where you make some awkward attempts at... Um, at sharing your, you know, your story, is sharing your message, but it's not really coming coming out, uh, you know, the way you want it. It's not landing in in a way that you you want. So it's a little bit quirky. It's there is a lot of growth to be had. It's a bit awkward, but it's already making progress. Now we want you to occupy this top quadrant both peter and i we are passionate about speaking and storytelling and helping people make their messages clear inspirational and persuasive and impactful in an ethical and authentic way now what happens there like how do you get to that green space of confidence well, when you get your ability to inspire, uh, you know, how you show up and, and it's all about your audience and you know how to position your profound value in a simple and easy to understand way, you occupy the space of what we call being a respected expert. 
Now, you already are a respected expert at what you do. You're good at what you do. But from the speaking perspective, like people look up to you. They, they want to hear what you have to say. They are inspired by your stories, by your insights, by your messages. You, you show them what's possible. Now, even though you share your stories, it's not about you. It's about your audience and showing what's possible for them. What would that feel like to be in that space? Would, would that be something that you would like to find out, to discover how to learn and become better at it? Now, we want to suggest that there is this even higher level than being a respected expert. Like if you get your ability to inspire and uh, position your value of eight and above, you can occupy the space of what I call being the visionary guide. And this is where, you know, you not only show up to inspire and you, you, you not only show up to um, and your messaging is real crystal clear, you actually, what is the difference between being a visionary guide and a respected expert? Well, the moment you step up to this top level of being a visionary guide, you make this space available for your audience. You look at them as respected experts. You look at them as heroes. You see the potential for them. You see the possibility for them. You inspire them and they are inspired by your messaging and you become the visionary guide for them. You support them. You encourage them to, um, to make a difference. So um, this, the visionary guide comes from the place of lived wisdom. There is no ego involved and there is just genuine desire to share the insightful lessons with others. So um, I'm a little bit, we need to, I need to uh, move it. I just want to, as Peter said, that... We have something uh, incredible to share with you. Um, you know, we have a program launching, which I will talk about in a second. But before I talk about the program, I just want to talk about your future just for um, a short while. So most people think that the distance between today and sometime in the future, let's say 12 months, uh, there is a straight line. But it's actually not a straight line. It's a curve and you can either go up into your, let's call it dream business when things are aligned and um, just everything's great. Or you can go into the, um, down the red line, which is what do we call mediocrity or worse. Now, I assume that you want to be on the green line. So what is the difference between the green line and the red line? The difference between uh, the dream line and the mediocrity line is the difference between drift and decision. There are few decisions that you need to make. First of all, are you willing to jump the lines? Um, second decision is... Are you willing to stay on the green line? It's not enough to just say, yes, I'm going to change my life. You need to dedicate your effort and your, your um, uh, commitment and your behavior to stay on the green line. And we have a program that can massively accelerate your speaking abilities to increase your business results, to hold you accountable, to provide the space of growth and nurturing for, for your development. And the third decision is... Are you, how long are you prepared to wait to jump the lines? Because the longer you wait, and we don't really care whether you take it, an action with us or not. Obviously, we would love to have you, but if, if it's not us, you, if you want your life to change, if you want to make progress, don't wait to make a decision. Because the longer you wait, the bigger the gap gets between decision, the green line, and the red line. So make it quick. Success likes speed. So make the right decision that feels right to you, that is in alignment with your values. Now, with that being said, let me just share quickly about the program that Peter briefly mentioned when he was talking. Speak with impact, become the transformational presence and elevate your results. It's a six-week program. 
and uh, just going to briefly go over what to expect. So the first session, Peter will talk about, you know, why are you speaking? It's, it established the purpose and the intent. It aligns your objectives with the needs of your audience and it sets the tone for your speech. You know, you have to really know like what the, the purpose of your speech. Then it will become easier for you to build upon it. And I will talk about stories, stories that really, why stories and how to leverage your stories, how to discover your voice, that really stories build credibility. They elevate your brain, uh, brain. Yes, they do elevate your brain, but your brand and also make you unique and remarkable. They open up hearts uh, and, and they engage behavior. So stories are important and it's not just about you know, there is a method to sharing stories in a strategic way. And I'm going to uh, teach you. The second session is what's the point or what's your message? Peter will help you clarify the point of your message because there is no, um, you know, there is no point of sharing a story or sharing a presentation if it doesn't serve a clear message, doesn't support a clear message. And that... Uh, you know, that will help you. It, it's kind of like will develop the anchor for your speech and will keep your audience engaged. I will talk about how to organize your story in a natural and flowing way. Uh, what are the steps? A very simple storytelling framework how to, uh, you know, a formula, if you will, that is very versatile and it will make your story or your message resonate with your audience. And you can use it in so many different shapes or forms. Session number three, how do you close a speech? You have to begin with the end in mind. And the last thing that you're going to say is going to be the thing that people, your audience will remember most. So you have to be very intentional and very strategic about it. So, and and you know, this this is the right order to to start working on your uh, speech. And I will talk about the types of stories. Uh, because we're not going to just engage in a creative writing class or creative speaking class. It's about, you know, the strategy, like what do you want to, how do you want to move your audience? Do you want to inspire them? Do you want to connect with them emotionally? Do you want to awaken possibility? Do you want to inspire their action? And uh, I'm, I'm going to um, share with you the different types of stories that you, again, you can use in so many different ways. Session number four, how do you open the speech? How do you capture uh, attention and set expectations? Look, Peter is absolutely brilliant at this. And you have to, you only have one chance to make the first impression. If you fail to capture people at the first sentence, they are not going to listen to what you have to say next. So you have to be, again, intentional and strategic about it. And I'm going to talk about the strategic approach to storytelling. How do you not just capture attention, but uh, create an interest, curiosity, uh, help people be engaged, uh, awaken their desire, and compel them to take action, but again, in an ethical and authentic way. Stories are not just to entertain or inspire or educate. They also serve a purpose to move people to action. And oftentimes you can use stories. By the way, storytelling is the best way to sell. And I call this approach a story, story selling. Like when you, when you share the possibility, people can see themselves in that picture and they want that because they can see the transformation in their life uh, with the help of your product or services. And session number uh, five, uh, this is where Peter is going to have lots of fun with you. What do you put in the body of the speech? Uh, I mean, we're going to have a lot of fun uh, throughout, but this is really the easiest part, really, of the speech, because if you do all the steps before um, in, in the right way, like this will become easy and will just flow. So um, 
the body of of the speech really expands on the opening and and supports and flushes out your your main message um and i will talk about how to generate ideas that stand out um because i hear i work with a lot of people and i hear this objection all the time well my stories and my ideas are not attention worthy they're quite boring like my my uh, life story is quite boring well <laughs> That's first of all, that's not true, but there are some simple and very effective ways to get your creative juices flowing to create a depository of stories, ideas, and insights that you can plug into uh, for different speeches. And even the most common observation could be turned into the most insightful and impactful story. And there are some practical steps that you can take today to really make your uh, ideas pop stand out because you you will share them through your own perspective you are unique and one of a kind as an individual but when it comes to articulating that in your communication in your stories in your presentations that's where people find it a little bit difficult so we're there to support you and session number six, we are going to talk about, you know, it's accountability, um, action plans, discussions and feedback, some questions. And by the way, accountability will be throughout all of the sessions prior to that. So and we'll also provide our support throughout the six week program. Uh, the Peter will share um, the uh, code uh, in, in a second uh, of how to uh, sign up, check it out. Um, and we would love to have you if, if that resonates. Um, so, yeah, that's what I have. And I am on time. Peter, do you have anything else to add? Um, hold on. Let me just come out of this screen. So... Hi. So, um, yeah, I've got a couple of things to add just briefly because we're getting up to, to the end of the time. Um, uh, yeah, some nice comments from John Ree, by the way. John, nice to see you on here and thanks for your kind words. Uh, we've currently got uh, 165 people watching this, believe it or not. So for everybody that's watching, I hope you've been finding it useful uh, listening to the two of us. Um, I, uh, while I was checking social media in the background and just making a few comments of uh, uh, the nice things people were saying, I got a Friday email from the CPD Standards Office. Now, uh, um, some of all, you, know, you will know that I'm currently going through the CPD process, so we can put the CPD badge on, onto the programs that we've got. Uh, and um, one of the things is they send out a Friday uh, morning blog. And it is a story about the stories you can tell, the magic of storytelling in human evolution. Can you believe that? What the mm. is that? Synchronicity, the, huh? <laughs> these stories have given us memory and learning, social cohesion, cognitive development, and cultural evolution. Wow. Well, I just help people stand up and speak. If they, that, all that happens as well, I'm very, very grateful for it, if I'm honest. So it's fascinating, isn't it? Um, mm. Uh, again, some of you know, you know, I've got a brand new website coming out talking about storytelling across the whole business piece. Uh, and, you know, I have a firm belief that, you know, certainly the last 25, 26 years I've been in business. Really, I've been a storyteller more than anything else. And I've helped businesses to share their story. And within sharing their story and sharing the whole ability of that. And one of the things I do with that is working with how I work with Leslie, in fact, who's you know on this call today. Um, part of it, one individual and really important part, is speaking, which is why Anna and I are, are doing this process. So I think the simplest thing to do is to say, if any of this interested you, if you feel you need some more help, um, just get in touch with either of us and we'll tell you about the program that we've got and what we're doing, how we're launching it. Um, and obviously, you know, if, if you just want some simple help and advice, we're very happy to do that. And, if, uh, you know, and if you want to come on the program, that's great, too. If not, it's been great to serve you for the last 58 minutes and 56 seconds. So, yep, we're on time now. And this is very yes. good going. You know, we're actually getting there with that. I'm learning. I'm learning. I usually go over time. but <laughs> Claire, Susan and Leslie, if you want to hang around for a couple of minutes afterwards, we're just going to say hi properly. I'll bring you in, into the studio itself. But for now, what I would say very simply is that if you know um, speaking is really important, it will elevate your business. If that's what you're trying to do, if you really want to elevate your business, if you want to uh, you know, innovate your brand, 
And then speaking is the answer for many things. Mm -hmm. If you want to find out more, by the way, here's the QR code. I've just put that up. You know, just stick the phone there now. Click on it. It tells you more about the program itself. Uh, but as I said, just get in touch with us. That's the way we do things. You know, we're not going to give you a heavy sales pitch. If it's something that you think you want to know about, let's just have a chat about it, and we'd love to serve you. Um, other than that, I think uh, it's time to hit the rock, rock music, as it says it is here. Uh, thanks very much indeed to everybody. I'll put this on, and we hope to see you again soon. See you yes. soon. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs>